In this video, we're going to go beyond just the major and perfect interval, and we're going to learn about augmented, diminished, minor intervals. But first, make sure you have a strong grasp on the major and the perfect intervals. And if not, if you're not clear, go back and review the last chapter's videos, read through the chapter, read through the PowerPoint, make sure you have a really, really strong understanding of the major and perfect so that we can build upon that knowledge and learn about augmented, diminished, and minor intervals. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is how we alter the perfect interval. And let's just review what the perfect intervals are within the major scale. We said in the last chapter that the perfect intervals were unisons or one or P1 we learned, fourths or perfect fourth, perfect fifth, and what was the last one? Octave, perfect octave. Now sometimes within a song, a composer is not gonna wanna just have that perfect interval. So they're gonna be notes that fall outside of the scale. And that's what we're learning about now is they're kind of altered intervals. So we're gonna learn how to take that perfect interval and we're gonna learn how to either make that interval smaller by a half step or larger by a half step. And we're gonna learn what we're gonna call that. So my first example, we're, we'll just do one in the key of C, okay? So if we have a C, and if we have a perfect fourth up from C, what's gonna be a perfect fourth up from C? And you hopefully don't even have to think about the we walked home thing, because if you think about the key of C, there's no sharps or no flats in it, so no matter what note we put on top, it's either gonna be a perfect or a major interval, if I was talking about a third or something. But I said a perfect fourth, so let's just remember one, two, three. All right, that is my perfect fourth. Now again, there might be a time in a song that a composer doesn't wanna have that interval right there, whether it be melodic or harmonic. Sometimes a composer might wanna put a sharp on there. Okay, but is that a perfect interval anymore once that sharp is on there? Does an F sharp fall within the key of C? No, it does not. So what are we gonna call that? It's still a fourth, right? But not a perfect fourth, we're gonna call that an augmented fourth because it's still a fourth, okay? But it's not perfect anymore, that sharp, what has that sharp done? Has it gotten bigger or smaller? Think about it. If you're from C to F, that F sharp has made that interval get larger. So that we're gonna call that an augmented fourth. So the interval that's a half step larger from the perfect is gonna be called augmented and that's just a memorization thing. It's a vocabulary thing, just memorize it right now. I always tell my students to think about plastic surgery and when things get augmented, are they getting bigger or getting smaller? Whatever that body part is, is usually getting bigger. So augmented, getting bigger than the perfect by a half step. On the other hand, what if the composer took that same fourth, but instead of it being the sharp note or the natural note, which was the perfect, what if there was a flat on there? What has that interval now done? Has that interval gotten bigger? Well, we said the sharp made it bigger, but let's think about it. An F flat, AKA, and, and harmonically that's E, but it's not written as E, so we're still calling that F flat because this is C to F flat, it's still a fourth. We're gonna call that a diminished fourth, okay? So when it is a half step smaller than the perfect, it's called diminished. Again, memorization thing. And I will post this little tool that I have, but I always just kind of think about it like this. Here's my greater than, less than sign, and perfect is in the middle. The interval that is greater than is my augmented. The interval that's less than is diminished. And you could even flip that around, it doesn't matter. But just remember those terms as they relate to the perfect. Now we just did C, which was easy, easy example. Let's do one that's a little bit more difficult. So let's do F, and we'll do the same perfect fourth. So if F to B flat, which was an example we used in the last video, if F to B flat is my perfect fourth, what am I going to do to make that augmented? And let's remember, a rewind if you forgot, was augmented when it got bigger or got smaller. Augmented was when it got bigger. So let's think about what we can do to that top note. We're just gonna adjust the top notes right now. What can we do to that top note to make this get larger? Well, if that top note already has a flat on there from F to B flat, 
What can we do to make that get larger? How about if we took that flat away and we made it just a regular old B? Would that be larger? I do believe so. So if we take that off and we put a natural on there, oops, not perfect anymore. We have an augmented fourth now. Hopefully that's clear. Now let's do a diminished fourth. I'm going to go back to my perfect though, because we're always thinking about aug uh, augmented and diminished being a half step either smaller or larger than the perfect. So here we're back to kind of home base, which is our perfect fourth. And let's see what we need to do if we need to make that diminished. Now we already said augmented was when it got bigger. So diminished must mean when it gets smaller by a half step. It already has a flat on there though. So what could I do to that top note to make this one get smaller? Do we remember another term we learned way back when or symbol that is? How about that double flat? You guys remember that? So that's what we would do to make that a diminished fourth. Now, enharmonically, meaning the note we would play on our keyboard from F to B, okay, that would be one flat. That's two flats. You might be like, hey, that's an A. That's not B double flat. Remember, B double flat enharmonically is the same as A. But from F, if we wrote it as F to A, is that a fourth anymore? It's not. So this actually is what? That's actually my major third. So and these are enharmonic intervals. They're going to be played the exact same way. I can either play a diminished fourth, oops, F to B double flat. Hey, that's the same thing as when I play F to A. So they sound the same. I play the same notes on the piano, but in two different songs, they're going to be notated differently. Let's do a couple more examples. So that was some fourths. Let's do some fifths. Now let's do one from, how about one that starts on a flatted note? We're going to do E flat and we're going to try to build some augmented and diminished perfect fifths. Now, perfect fifth, we need to first build our perfect fifth before we do the augmented and diminished. So let's remember how we do our perfect fifth. And remember, if you know your key of E flat, you know that the key of E flat has a B flat, E flat, and A flat in it. And if not, if you didn't know that off the top of your head or didn't want to refer to your circle of fifths, remember we go back and we do, we walked home when we walked home to build a fifth. We're going to go whole, whole, half, whole to get our perfect because you always want to start from your perfect interval first and then adjust it to make it either augmented or diminished, whatever the question might be. So from E flat, if we go whole, whole, half, whole, I'm on B flat. So my perfect interval is E flat to B flat. But now I don't want to know the perfect because hopefully we already knew how to do that. Probably didn't even need to review it. But let's change that and let's do an augmented fifth. Now remember, right now we're just adjusting the top note. So rewind or if you took notes or looking at the PowerPoint, remember what is augmented? Is that bigger or smaller by a half step? Bigger because remember plastic surgery. Okay, so if it already has a flat on there, if we're on E flat to B flat, it already has a flat on there. If we need to make it bigger by a half step, what are we going to do? We're going to take away that flat and we're going to make it just a regular old B up there. And you can put a natural on there if you so desire. And that right there has become an augmented fifth. Now let's go back to home base and let's change this to a diminished fifth. So home base is the perfect fifth. Remember the perfect fifth was E flat to B flat. Now, if we want to make this a diminished fifth, there's already a flat on there. So what do I do? Just like earlier in the example, we're going to add another flat on there to kind of bring that down. I always want to think about this spatially or imagery on the piano keyboard can really help as far as whether you're thinking about the function of those sharps and flats. So double flat up there makes this my diminished fifth. So those are some examples with flats on there. Now let's do some that are going to use sharps. So let's do, let's see, how about we do 
we'll go from G and we'll do, I want to just build an augmented fifth right off the bat. Now remember, the first step is going to be just getting to that home base. Like I said, let's find the perfect one first and then we'll either adjust it by making it smaller or making it larger. So the perfect fifth from G, you can either think about the key of G and if you knew right offhand that the key of G has an F sharp in it, you would know right away that oh, all I need is a DF there because there's no D sharp or anything in the key of G. But if you forgot that, you would just need to go whole, whole, half, whole. I promise it would take you to D. I'm not going to demonstrate right now. So we would know that this one up here would be perfect. Now what do we do to that top note to make that augmented? We're going to add bloop, a sharp up there. So from G, oh I don't have it up there, but from G to D sharp is my augmented fifth. Let's do another one together. Let's do from B and we're going to do an augmented fifth. And I would suggest you getting that staff paper out. So push pause, go get some staff paper and do this with me and make sure that you're following and really learning and listening, not just, okay, not just listening. Make sure you're doing and active learning. So from B, we want to do an augmented fifth. Pause, get your staff paper. Unpause. All right. Remember, first step is find that perfect interval. So from B, what's a perfect fifth up from B? You can either think about the key of B, F, C, G, D, A sharps, if you know those offhand. And if not, from B, go up whole, whole, half, whole. Go ahead and do that now and tell me what you get for your perfect. I'm listening. Okay, hopefully you got... F sharp for your perfect. But we need to augment it. Now if it already has a sharp on there, what can we do to that top note to make it larger? Remember the double sharp thing? And the double sharp, remember, it's actually not two sharps like that, which some of you guys did on your homework a long time ago, and I did correct, but it just really looks like an X. So an augmented fifth up from B is going to have a double sharp on there. Now, Let's do, because I've only been doing fourths and fifths, let's do a unison. How can we make an augmented unison? It's the same note. How do we augment that? Really, all that we have to do is just add either a, a sharp to either one of those notes. And sometimes what people will do is they'll put a natural in front and then a sharp so that you know the natural goes with that one, the sharp goes with that one. Or you could do that backwards, sharp than the natural. But just one of those notes has to be sharp because you're playing both those notes together. They don't really sound so good, but that's an augmented unison. Now, how about a diminished unison? How can I make those two notes be smaller than that interval? You really can't, it's kind of a trick question. So there's not really such thing as diminished unison, but in augmented unison, you're just going to have one of those notes is generally going to have a sharp on it. Or really, you could have one of those notes is having a flat on it as well, as long as they're basically a half of a step apart. As far as how we do it on octaves, F to F, that's an octave. All that we would need to do is either, if we need to make it augmented, you would put a sharp up there because you've gone up by a half step, or you could put a flat on there to make it diminished because you've brought it down by a half step. Now, so far we've only been talking about how we change that top note. Can we change that bottom note and alter intervals and make them perfect from the perfect, make them augmented or diminished? We really can. You just have to think about your sharps and flats as kind of functioning differently because on the bottom note, if you put a sharp on that bottom note, has that interval gotten smaller or gotten larger? Think about it. If you're on F to F and you sharp that bottom note, you're actually bringing that bottom note up. So when a sharp goes on the bottom note, you're actually making it diminished if it's coming from a natural note. So this right here is going to be a diminished octave, whereas when that sharp on the top note, that made it the augmented octave. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And it kind of works the opposite way as well. If on the top note you put a flat, 
you've actually brought that top note down, so you've brought that interval smaller. Whereas when the flat was on the bottom note, you've made it get larger. Because when the flat's on the bottom note, the bottom note's dropping down, so it's becoming augmented. So always just be careful whether you're adjusting the top note or the bottom note and think about what that flat or that sharp is doing to the general size and spatial distance between those two notes.